Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutech and I'm excited to be back to talk about this $500 budget PC you can build this year. All right, let's get started. First with the motherboard being the MSI Pro H610MG. This is a pretty bare bones basic motherboard, but it is perfect for a budget build. It also is good for upgrading if you ever plan to do so. All in all, a solid board from MSI and you'll want to place that directly on top of the box it came in. Now let's take a look at the CPU we'll be using, the Intel i3-12100F. The CPU came out almost two years ago and it is still killing it in the budget PC world. It has four cores, eight threads, and max clock of 4.3 GHz and is frankly my favorite CPU to use on lower priced builds. To install it, first unhinge this lever and then open up the bracket. Then get your 12100F and gently remove it from its plastic casing. You'll want to make sure this bottom left with the golden triangle matches up with this part of the bracket. Gently place the CPU into its socket, wiggle it around a little bit to confirm it's in, and then lower the bracket, and then rehinge the lever. And then you can remove this black plastic cover. Now let's move on to the RAM being T-Create's DDR4 memory. It runs at 3200 MHz and has a cast latency of 16. And if that's all tech mumbo jumbo to you, I'll just say this RAM is pretty ideal for gaming. To install it, you'll first need to lower these two retention tabs on the RAM slots. Then place the RAM into its slot with the sticker facing the CPU, then apply gentle pressure to click the RAM in. Next up is the storage, which is HP's EX900 NVMe M2 SSD. This is a pretty run of the mill SSD, but it's NVMe, meaning you're still going to get very rapid speeds. This means tasks that require loading will be fast, such as loading into a game. Before we can install the SSD, we need to screw in this M2 locker. The bag can be found in the motherboard box, and it'll go into this slot right here. You will need a smaller Phillips head screwdriver to fasten it in. Once that's ready, install the SSD in this orientation. Then use this little tab to secure it in place. So now we have the CPU, RAM, and storage installed. Let's move on to prepping the case. The case I chose is the Nova Mesh M ARGB Micro ATX chassis. Not only is it a solid, good looking case coming from BitPhoenix, but it all. Whoops. But it also comes with three pre installed ARGB fans. So it'll make the building process a lot easier since I don't feel like any extra fans need to be installed for this particular build. Anyway, make sure you remove the front and back panel by loosening the two screws on the back and then locate this bag in the cable area. It's very important. It has all the screws that we'll need for the rest of this build. Now it's time to install the IO shield. You'll find this in the motherboard box. It's sometimes a little bit difficult to install these IO shields, but as long as you're applying even pressure on all the corners, it'll eventually click into place. Now we're done prepping the case and it's time to install the motherboard. And the best way to do this is to align the IO with the IO shield. Then out of that bag I was talking about earlier, you'll find these screws. They're what we'll be using to fasten the motherboard and we'll need six total. With that done, it's the perfect time to install the CPU cooler. Since we're only using an i3, the stock cooler will be just fine for this build. Also note that this comes with pre-applied thermal paste. To install it, all you have to do is push down on all four tabs until you hear a click, or until you look at the back and see that all four notches came through the back of the motherboard. You'll also not want to forget to plug it in, so plug it into this top connector right here, which should be labeled CPU Fan 1. Next on the list is the power supply, and I chose the Aris Game 500 Watt 80 Plus Brown Certified Supply. Speaking from experience, this is the perfect supply for a computer that isn't super power hungry, and it has really great value, so it's perfect for budget builds. You'll want to install it in this area right here, ensuring that the fan is facing the bottom of the case. And once again, we'll be using screws that came with that important bag that came with the case from earlier. And now for the most tedious part of every PC build, plugging everything in, we'll start with the 24 pin power connector, which will go through this middle cutout. It can be a little tough to get plugged in all the way sometimes, just ensure you're applying even pressure until it's flush with its connector. Next is the CPU cable. You'll notice there's two different ones. It does not matter which one you use. Honestly, just pick the one that's more convenient and will make cable management a little easier. After that, coming out of the top of the case is the USB 3.0 cable. It'll get routed through this middle cutout and make sure you're plugging it in the right way. It does have a notch that shows you which orientation it gets plugged in. After that will be the HD audio cable, which will go into this bottom right cutout. 
It's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but you gotta just fish it through there. And it'll get plugged into the bottom left of the motherboard. Next is everyone's least favorite cables, the front panel cables. These get routed through this bottom middle cutout, and then using the diagram that came with the motherboard manual, we can see where each individual connector gets plugged in. Next, let's grab these two cables coming out of the fan hub. We're gonna route these through this top middle cutout. The more boxy looking one will get plugged into this header labeled System Fan 1, and the more round shaped one will get plugged into the J Rainbow 1 header. And we'll use the SATA power connector coming out of the power supply to power the fan hub, and it doesn't matter which SATA power connector you use. Now let's prep for the graphics card. First, loosen and remove this plate, and then get started on removing the top two PCIe brackets. The top one is held in place by a screw, and the second to top one you'll have to remove manually. And now let's take a look at the graphics card we'll be using, the RX 580 with 8GB of VRAM. And if this isn't available, a great alternative is the RX 6500 XT, gives you roughly the same performance. And as always, you'll find links for everything in my description. But this card is a 1080p beast and will handle all modern games with no problems, as you'll see in the benchmarks later in the video. Make sure you push down the PCIe retention bracket before installing the video card. Apply some even pressure until you hear a click coming from that PCIe retention bracket we just pushed down. Then give some support to the bottom of the graphics card and use that screw from earlier to fasten that card in place. And last but not least, get the PCIe power cable which comes out of the power supply and plug it into the RX 580. And that's pretty much it for this build, just put all the panels back in place and you're done. This was probably the easiest build I've ever done and I'm really impressed with how simple it was to build and I hope I did an okay job at making it just as simple for you guys. But before we can use this computer, we must install Windows, so let's get to it. So first, you'll want to get a USB drive that is at least 8GB in size and plug it into a secondary computer. Then search up Windows 10 or 11 ISO and click the first Microsoft link. I'll also have the link to this site in my description. Then run the file, click yes, let it do a little bit of loading and make sure you have create installation media selected. Then click next. Ensure all the settings are to your preference and the architecture is 64 bit. Then click next, select USB flash drive, click next and select the drive that you plugged into your computer. And click next and it'll do a little bit of loading this will take about five minutes when that's finished you can remove the usb drive and plug it into the newly built pc go ahead and boot it up and it should take you to this screen make sure all the language settings are correct then click next and then install now we're going to put in the product key later so click i don't have a products key and then select windows 10 home or pro doesn't really matter which click i accept the license terms click next then custom install windows only. There should be only one drive that shows up, make sure that's selected and then click next and then it'll start installing windows. Once it reboots, it'll take you through the standard windows setup. You'll have to click I don't have internet and set up without internet as with this particular computer, we'll have to externally install the LAN drivers and then put it onto the computer. To do this, we'll once again use an external USB drive. You can use the same one as last time, just make sure it's erased. Go to this website right here, link will be in my description, and install the Windows 10 edition of the LAN drivers. Now, a lot of the time you don't have to actually do this, but for whatever reason, you do it with this particular motherboard. Anyway, put that file you just installed onto the USB drive, plug it into the new computer, and then run this file right here. After that, there's one more thing we wanna do, which is restart the computer and turn on XMP. When you're taken to this screen right here, you'll want to spam the delete key until it takes you to the BIOS. From here, simply click XMP Profile 1, then click the X on the top right and click Yes. It'll then reboot you back to Windows. We'll also want to ensure we're using an activated version of Windows, so head over to digitalchillmart.com, the best place to get Windows 10 and 11 license keys. Grab Windows 10 Home or Pro, depending on what you installed earlier, and use coupon code RUTECH at checkout to get a 20% discount. And yes, you can trust this site. I've been partnered with them for three years now, and if you run into any issues, feel absolutely free to send me an email. You can find my address in the description. Now for the rest of the drivers you'll need, you can find the links to those right below, and they're as simple as clicking them, running them, and restarting your computer. And last but certainly not least, we have the benchmarks. It's truly impressive how the RX 580 is not just still available, but can also compete in modern gaming in terms of performance. And if you ended up having to get the 6500 XT as the 580 might have not been available or the price changed, it'll give you roughly the same exact performance as you're seeing on the screen right now. Either way, I'll drop the commentary for now. I'll just play some nice music in the background so you can check out how well this PC performs.
So that will wrap up today's build video. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Have any comments or questions, definitely join my Discord. You can find the link in the pinned comment. And of course, if you enjoy the content you're seeing, a subscription would be super appreciated. Thanks for watching. Peace out.